Now, every time we post a picture or run a story of a car that's got a conversion engine or an old car that's got all of the new mod cons, we always see a whole heap of opinions, a little bit of hate. Today, we've got these guys here to talk about the right way and the wrong way to mod or restore your old car. So for anyone that's been hiding under a rock or doesn't have YouTube, this is Al and Woody from the Skid Factory. They've got so many runs on the board with weird engine conversions. Who better to talk about conversion cars putting weird engines in weird cars? Am I allowed to say that weird and weird or is that? Yeah. 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 Reasonable description. So first things first, why do people do it? Like, why do we buy old cars? In your opinion, when you see guys doing these conversions, why do we put ourselves through it? I guess there's a lot of emotion involved with the purchase of an old car. Uh, it's like, oh, that was my first car, that was my first car that I kissed a girl in, or my parents had one when I was little, and I just want to go back and probably revisit those old days where I didn't have to worry about all this stuff as an adult. It's an interesting point you bring up, because personally mine is always so, I, the first car that I truly loved, I think, was my Datsun 1600 four-door, and at the time, not a care in the world, didn't have anything to worry about. All I needed to worry about was keeping my car on the road. Um, admittedly, it was all of the dodgy parts and it was just whatever you could cobble together to keep it running for the week. So now looking back on it, you can see that, you know, I always have this, this thing that I want to do it again and do it right. That explains a lot that you're a Datsun lover from way back, just like, just like Al. Oh, I'm big on, I like the look of a car, like, Hey, that's a sweet car. Yeah, let's grab that. Let's do something with it. Let's modify it. I've, I've got my love for, for cars for sure. My first car was a S12 Gazelle, which I'd love to buy one. If you had that, so let's say you've got your Gazelle, you've got your... Ooh. First car? Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, just say it. Yeah, what is it? Datsun 1000. What sort of suspension was in the front of that? Uh, it had transverse leaf and leaf springs at the back. Yeah. Transverse leaf. So it was, just leaf. Like, it was I, basically a Corvette. I remember, <laughs> I remember seeing a Datsun 1000 after we had 1600s and 1200s and one of my mates had a 1000 and we put a carbureted 12A in it yeah. and went, oh, we'll just lower it. And then we looked at the front and went, uh, all Datsun people. So we've picked the perfect audience here because clearly the best cars ever made. <laughs> Gets to the next bit of this. Once you actually had this thing, wh why do we choose to modify it? Like, what do, what, what do you think's up with that? What's the reasoning or what's the feel behind? It comes down to an age thing. When I, like, when you had your first car, I suppose that was you fresh on your license, and you probably don't have the budget to do something crazy that you can do now. Um, but it's making it, just making it better, making it drive better, making it stop better, making it faster. Like, and. Nowadays, if, if you've got the budget to back it up, you can do that. So you go, why am I going to deal with, what was that's 1000 A, what engines? It was a an A10. A a yeah. I put an A12 in oh, one, of big course. Block. So, so <laughs> if you're dealing with that, like one, you probably can't even find that engine, but why would you deal with this crappy old engine when there's so much, so many better options to use? Like, Yeah, true. That's, that's one way of looking at it, but also the other way of looking at it is, I don't really want to go fast, I just want to have that engine, but I want it to run properly. So there's, yeah, there's two ways to look at it. You either want to make that first car that you had way better and make it fast and all that, or you just want to make it a much better version of what you had, which was probably pretty crap because you had no money. <laughs> you know, I'm probably with you in this case where, we'll keep going down the Datsun route because it makes complete sense that in a 1600, they had the L16 carburetor, like, it made no power, it was absolutely horrible. I'm probably more with you where I don't want the thing to make three or 400 kilowatts in that sort of era of car where to do a nice SR20 conversion on it where it's fuel injected, it makes 100 kilowatts at the wheels and you go, yeah, that's a nice cruiser and that's kind of bought it up to date so that you can cruise it on the yep. freeway reasonably and you can keep up with traffic. Also, I do have to correct you there, but when well, you said SR20, you meant K20? Yep, I stand corrected and I, <laughs> and I do agree. The next bit, mod. When we say like a mod modification, what is a modification? When we're talking about these old style cars, like if you've got an old, full classic, beautiful thing, what is a mod? Is it changing the tires to like current model? Is it changing the radiator so the thing doesn't overheat? 
I would consider a modification something that's like really quite removed from the, the original. Um, they, I would say tyres, radiator, that sort of thing, improvement mm -hmm. to make it so it actually works properly, but modification I'd be looking more along the lines of completely changing the induction system or exhaust or that sort of thing so it actually makes it go faster. Or, you know, handling-wise, a, a major change to the suspension design I guess would be a modification, but just putting springs and shocks in it, that's just improving it. It comes down to the car too though, like which, what kind of vehicle are you restoring or modifying? And you know, like if you're swapping out your copper brass radiator for an alloy one, you know, depending on the car, yes, yeah, sweet, all right, just get an alloy one. But if it's a car that's worth money or a value, I'd go, Nah, don't worry about that alloy one. Let's get the copper brass radiator restored so it's from so it's factory. If we're talking about a '50s model Ferrari, mm -hmm. I probably don't want to see an alley radiator in the front of it. But Al's got a really good point. Why? Like, there's no point in having that car if you can't drive it because it overheats. Yep. But personally, I'd put a copper olden days radiator in it. I'd probably get the oldest guy I possibly know to braze it together to make it look just like the original. This is obviously age specific because to Woody, a 90s car is old because he was born in 1991 well, yeah. or something. But to me, a 70s car is, you know, it's sort of, it's very age specific about what you consider an old car for a start. Because yeah. I don't consider a, a, you know, a VB Commodore to be old because I was <laughs> like five years old when it came out. So, yeah. So that's modern to you. Well, it is, yeah, because I was alive yeah, when it okay. came out. If, if it yeah. was made before I was born, then it's old. Yeah, okay. fair <laughs> call. In your opinion, when is it reasonable to modify a car, a, a VB Commodore, when is it reasonable to restore it and say, you know what, we need to restore this back to the full original and put it under covers and put it under a blanket in a shed somewhere because we, we want to preserve that and we want to take it out once a month to put it around and show people that you got style. If it was a six-cylinder car, there's no way in the world I'd bother doing anything like restoring it and putting it under a sheet because that engine is so lame that why would you? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not doing the car or the fact the fact that the car survived that long. It's not doing it justice. Um, you'd probably go 308, you know, restore that back to original because that's still doable. You can make a half decent engine out of a 308. It might not be fast. Like it definitely won't be fast, but it'll sound good. And then you can sort of add your things around it to make it, you know, get the style, the sound, whatever. And then, and you'd be able to drive that whenever you wanted to. And that's important. And you reckon, is that a restoration if you've then, say, if it was a V8 car that you did the V8 and I sort of get it, but then if you're then also modding, you're modding it and restoring yeah. it, you can't have both. I that's don't not think the question. That, I wouldn't consider putting a factory fitted engine into a car Six just because it didn't have it doesn't mean it wasn't fitted to it. Six That's not a modification. Chassis, eight cylinder engine. But it's the same thing, no. Yeah? It's just a different engine in the same chassis. So, Whoa. that's. that's Whoa. I, I mean, controversial because I'm, I've done it before. But I'm big on working with what you've got. And if you've got a perfectly good six cylinder in there, then fix that up. Why not turbo that six banger? You know. You, you've nailed it. Perfectly good six cylinder. That is that does not describe any Holden six cylinder. Well, okay. sorry, Holden lovers. Like okay. yeah, they were cool in LJ Tiranas. Cross, cross flow? No cross flow. You're talking about. You're talking none. Yeah. Never had any of that stuff. They had head bolts going through the middle of the intake port. You would you would <laughs> die. <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> unpopular opinion is yeah. Do not restore anything that's a Holden non-cross-flow engine. But yeah, let's there is no such thing as a cross-flow six-cylinder Holden, oh except for a VL engine. Let's not get brand yeah. specific. Well, that's, the first VL not, that's the first that's Holden the first engine that was any good. <laughs> <laughs> let's not get brand specific here, though. Okay. Like you can, you can apply that to anything if it were a Ford or Toyota or anything else. Like Working with what you've got, I think, is a good thing. And if you've got a good engine in the first Well, place, yeah, yes. Which if, the well, 308 actually, I'd consider a half-decent engine for its time. Yeah. See, my, probably my, um, my line of question again by thinking about this is probably the words um, like matching numbers. You know, when you see a car for sale that's matching numbers and you yep. go, oh, that's an actual stock standard car that someone has probably not even restored. It's simply never been used. Now, that probably leads into an interesting thing because 
if you restore one of these cars back to its absolutely original and it's exactly what you remember as a kid, I know that some of the cars that I've driven as a kid, if they were restored today back to absolutely original and I took it out for a drive, I'd be disappointed. And I know that because being an engine tuner here, I'm lucky enough that I get the opportunity to drive some of these cars that have been restored to original and I'll often drive it around the block and think, oh, cars weren't that good in the 70s <laughs> or the 80s. They really were. So what do we, like once you've restored these things and then you drive it and you might be disappointed, what do we do? Like you've just restored the car. So that's, as I said before, it's working with what I've got. So a great example is I've got a 1989 Toyota Crown GS130. It's a wagon, so nice. awesome car, seven-seater cruiser. It's got a 1G GZD, so two-litre, six-cylinder, supercharged. Back in the day, great engine. They were popular for conversions too. But this time around, it's like, again, like you talk about, that it's not fast. It's not powerful by any means. Like, yeah, it's got a supercharger, but it's, it's, it is... It's on the verge of frustration. It's it is. That, that's it how is. bad it is. And anyone that's not into cars will drive it, example, my partner, and she said, this thing is so slow. And it is. It is. <laughs> oh, right and, it's, the and, and not a car person. <laughs> like, it, it is very slow. Yeah. So that comes down to how do you make that better? Do I, res do I work with that engine? Which I'm big on, which we've discussed and we were going to do. But now it's like, scrap that idea. Let's do something different. And we're going to put a barrier in it because that's... <laughs> that's All right, so restored <laughs> then modern. Yeah, yeah. All right, the one G that's in it is that going to come out and gently go to the side, or is that going to go to the scrap heap? Um, it's going to go on the side of marketplace.com and and yeah. to try and sell. Someone would, someone should hopefully yeah. buy that because it's a good running engine. Yeah, so that probably puts me in the right sort of idea to realise that okay, so you've restored it, realise that that's not really sort of realistic to be driving around today. Yeah, and you're not going to keep that engine and that engine number to put back in the thing nah, in 10 years' time. No, just, not that kind of car, no. Yep, just nah. not worth it. In in the instance of something like, let's go Moog's 240, mm. awesome car. And w what he's done to keep those parts aside for potentially restoring that back to factory, I'm all I'm all for that because that is a classic car that you do it that to. It was iconic. A the day legitimately that valuable car, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But not many people want a, a 1989 Toyota Crown, apart from weird people <laughs> like me. So, I weird, mean, weird and Toyota people. The Barra thing, we could have gone a different. Oh. We could have gone something totally different again. Um, but the Barra thing, for me, makes sense because it's bang for buck, power, turbo. It's going to be reliable. Like away we go. And I've also yeah. got. And some the parts. car weighs about the same as an FG Falcon, which yeah. is is. Probably the reason why it's so slow. Yeah. It's really heavy. Yeah. yeah. I've got also got the parts saying around, which is also a very big hand. Yeah, plus a the definite hand. factor. Look, one of the things, exactly what you just said, and Al, you're world famous for it, is the, the out of brand swaps. So that this engine into this car, we get, there's a lot of comments for that. This, this, is, this is it. This is the thing that people either love or furiously hate. I probably shouldn't even ask you what your opinion is because have you ever done an engine conversion with the same engine into the same family of car? Yeah, we have. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, Kingswood. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. We did a VL. That was very popular. Yeah. Um, when, when it comes to engine swaps, I, what I'm looking for, I'm not looking for shock value. Like I'm, I'm not taking them to SEMA or whatever. Like wh what I look for is value. So I look, that chassis has got this engine in it, but you can modify that engine, but it's not going to give you a great result or it's going to have compromises. Um, so then I look, well, what, what engine's available? And we particularly used to use the older, the Japanese V8s and that because they were, they were virtually free at, years ago and they're pretty cheap still now. You could boost them, you could make the power easily, they were smooth and reliable, gearboxes work great. You just had to look and go, okay, that's got the right layout, that should fit in the car, let's do that. So it definitely, like cars like that Blue Fairlane that we did, the very first car we ever built, that was actually posted on an American magazine site and it got, there was tempers, like people hated it. Yeah. <laughs> but the car's great. It's very practical. It's fast. It's probably like a low 10 second car now. And uh, it's survived five years and he drives it all the time. Yeah, so to me, that's hard. a win. Yeah, makes like, sense. You built a better car. Yeah, yep.
You're on the same. You're on the same path. No, well, look, uh, it's everyone's got their own opinion, and working with what you've got. If that ZC, well, it's not got the ZC. If you had like a car of value, then you kind of would maybe work with what you got. But like also... If it's a GT Falcon, obviously you're not going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, you know, it's kind of like, well, why not? And if you, if you can make the car better, then go for it. Like, it's going to be great. And this is working with what we got because the engine that we put in, it was out of Woody's Cressida. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, we, we like, actually, we do a lot of recycling of parts, project parts and stuff like that. Okay, so wrong engine family in the wrong cars... Where do, you're cool with that, but where do we draw the line? Is there a point where you go, come on, man, that, that's, not, that's not reasonable? When we originally had um, Gav with the Hakasuka, obviously an iconic vehicle, and also had a lot of people angry about what we did do to it, but he originally wanted to put a VQ35 out of a 350Z in it, and I basically just said, no, I'm, that's not happening under my watch. <laughs> and that's when we went investigating for other options and that's where we came up with the VK56 option, which is uh, obviously not to everyone's tastes, but it's, it's a, a very interesting engine with good output in a very interesting car. Yep. So to me, that's a, a good match. But a VQ engine is not great in a 350Z, so it's probably not worth putting into other things. <laughs> Funny, it's the first time I've heard you talk about that particular setup and I, I, I don't quite understand immediately why I completely agree with you. Mm. It doesn't make sense because I, the VQ, I, like when you say, oh, geez, that, oh, that would be rich. But then when you talk about a VK, you, know, you go, yeah, that makes sense. That's pretty cool. The, v, the VK56 is also different too, which is, and that's why you were doing this in like VH41s and stuff. Mm. I think it was also back in the day to be different. Like you. I'll put a... Well, we used to get them for yeah. three, three or four hundred dollars yeah. because yeah. no one knew what they were and no one wanted them. So. But then, you know, the the 1GZ V12 into a Subaru Liberty first, which then got changed into a into a 40 Series Land Cruiser. Like, that's just... Good old days. That's yeah. still going. The draw the line in the sand is, like, we would be, are you really making this car any better? So, yeah, the VQ, for example, I don't really like them either and they don't sound the best, but... Uh, you've got to be improving it. So you're not going to be putting another engine there to potentially have the same outcome or worse. What, like, why would you go down that route? Yeah, that's just stupid. Spending a lot of money to not improve a lot. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. And, you know, I would always have wanted to draw the line with, like, again, back to the Datsun reference where, where I'm at, that to put a nice SR20 in that to replace the L series, you know. But I've just said something wrong because I said a nice SR20. So the line in the sand is gone because I would absolutely in a heartbeat put a K24 in that engine and cross-contaminate and, and I, ah, that's absolutely I making it better. I think it would better. be more than accepted by most people because... Is that yeah. almost a standard that's just a, that's, oh yeah, that, that makes sense? I think it's okay to put a K engine into m most things within reason because it's, because it's known to be one of the best engines designed. So Yeah, yeah. And same with the 2JZ. It's a great engine. It's known that it is and that you can't really argue with that. Yeah. But as long as it's fit for purpose, as far as the chassis goes, then... It... Well, you can't really argue with that. Well, you can. You can argue with that. I've got a list of examples here that I want you to have a look at. Give me a yay or a nay. What do you think about these? So the first one, a K24 swapped Ferrari. Uh, I have, I have um, investigated this car a bit and yep. the... At, on face value, it's like, oh, he's putting a K into a Ferrari just so it looks cool. But having um, sort of... In, I've heard an interview with, with the owner, Mike Burrows, and his logic was sound, and that's what I'm looking for. It's um, the engine that was in it. Yes, it's a Ferrari engine, but it's, it's probably got as much power as a 202 uh, the, and probably wears out faster. So there's nothing good about the engine that was in it. Yes, it's a Ferrari, but it's probably not that rare in where it came from. Like, you know, like in the States, Ferraris aren't super rare like they are here. So as far as a project goes, the maths are sound, so go for it. I would drive the hell out of that thing. And, and, it's, and it's done really well. You'd yeah. break it. Yeah, I probably would break it. <laughs> <laughs> probably drive it to the shops. It probably gets excellent fuel economy. It yeah. just works. Yep. A twin turbo V10 Viper powered XP Falcon. The, yeah, sick. Great engine, great car. Go yeah. for it. Another awesome conversion. And for a car like that, you could you you've got 
the world is your oyster. You could put almost anything in there, really, this day and age, and that's an epic engine. That's awesome, yeah. I love yeah. it. Viper B10 is pretty cool. That yeah. weird odd fire, that funny noise that they make. Yeah. Yeah. So I love both the car and the engine, but I just something about it just doesn't work for me. And this is purely opinion. I'm sure it's beautifully built and goes like as as you'd expect, but it's just something about the that sort of mix of of really cool car and really cool engine that it's like double dipping. I suppose yeah, okay. it's yeah, no, I don't no, know, I feel it's it. something yeah. about it. The next one, this was a really popular one. We did a bunch of Haltec Hero stuff on this car. It's our friend Grim. He's got a Nissan R32 with a Barra in it. I know the car, I saw that at World Time Attack years ago and I, I love it, yeah. I, I think it's a good conversion. And dip, you know, people, usually with Skylines it was just always 26, 26, 30, or you kind of stick to the RB. Yep, yep. Um, some people doing JZ stuff, and then that came along, and, and it's really well done. There's a lot of real nice fab work in that yeah. car. He's done a real good job of, of making it nice. Yeah. I love the idea of RBs, but I just don't like the fact that they're so flawed in, 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 in reality. A barra is, I don't know, I am going to say it's a better engine, because that would be, <laughs> that would set the world on fire. I think the biggest thing here is it's not a GTR. Yeah. yeah. It's so hard to communicate with people that a R32 and a GDR R32 aren't the same. Like it's a, it's, it's not a completely different car, but it's, they're worlds apart as far as value and, and engineering goes. So do what you want. We, we stuck an LS twin turbo into one. Works great. Works better than a blown up. Oh, actually it had a VQ30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Works better than both a blown up RB20 and a blown up VQ30. So. <laughs> Al doesn't like RBs if you haven't picked up on nah, that. No, I get it. I, get I don't it. Well, not look, like them, I just don't like how flawed they are. Twin turbo LS, like what you just talked about, but in a Lamborghini. Yes, I have seen it. Um, I don't know, it seems like a SEMA idea to me, but... Like you were speaking about before, like in the US, these are more common cars that are a little bit more affordable than what we've got in Australia. And if you do manage to get a water damage one or if there's a reason why that engine is True. no longer available, yeah. Yeah. you go, you know what? Uh, yeah. I guess it may not be a registrable car as well, which would change oh. things completely. Yeah. If it's still road registered or able to be road registered, it's probably going to be devalued a little bit. So then you'd be looking at probably the K48, right? Ooh, a Barra swapped Tirana. I, I would do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Straight up. Did After I mention that? it's an XU1? No, yeah. no, I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. It's not. It's is, it not. A, is it a two door? Um, it's an LC, it's a two door. That's, that's definitely stepping on the line of, of um, <laughs> shooting yourself in the foot. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably still do it though. If I will not obviously don't own one myself, yeah, but if yeah. someone came to me and said, this is what I want to do, I'd still consider that to be a very reasonable path to a good car. I'd put a K series in an LC, but I wouldn't put a yeah, right. Uh, only, only because I'm, only because fitting a six cylinder into, I've done an LJ, it was a four door and one JZ, it was a pain. I think- Experience I'll give here. you some context Look, here. He's trolling the owner of the, <laughs> of the LJ Tirana. No, I would because- He wanted to put a K in, into his LJ Tirana and I just was like- It would have been a good conversion. You can't, you can't go there. Thanks man. Al. You just um, can't. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Two door, yeah. Look, it's the same with like people putting RBs and stuff in them, and it and it gets hate. But once upon a time, those cars weren't worth what they are now. So, if you had one, it's just a Tirana. Yeah, sweet. Let's put that engine in there. Go for it. All right. The next one we've got here is Bruce Garland's car. So I got the opportunity to spend a bit of time in this car and took it for a drive. It's an awesome thing. Uh, it's a Mark One Escort. It was F20 powered. Now it's K24 powered. I, I think that, I know that's a special car, but for the platform it's being used for with the, with the rally, go for it, yeah, awesome. That's a, that's a sweet conversion to perform in the class that that car's been built for, go for it, yeah. That's, that's wicked. Yeah, agreed. If it was a road car and it was, I mean, obviously they're worth a lot of money in, in, in certain circles, like, you know, in the, the UK, probably here as well. But if it wasn't a homologation special or something like that, and it's obviously a, a race competition car, then yeah, it's fit for purpose. And you know what? If this thing, when Bruce got that and it was in a state of almost disrepair, it may have never got a chance to get out on the racetrack in the first place for people to appreciate the, the body look of that car, which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, Whatever keeps them on the road. That's the, that's the special thing about sort of 
old cars and we're, we're putting the effort in to make to, to continue them. So yep. whatever you do to it, that's a good thing. Whatever keeps it on the road. What about if what kept it on the road was a 2JZ in a Lamborghini? Um, again, yeah, like a weird conversion. Mm -hmm. But the thing is about the 2JZ is it's such an awesome engine, so why not, you know? So I think the yep. why not here is it's not the right engine to put in the back of a car with a... An inline yeah. six. Yeah. I, I would say, again, it's it's not fit for purpose because it's it's heavy, it's... <laughs> it's in like cars driving back to front now. It's, uh, it's odd, yeah. Rod Darm's Corvette, three rotor powered Corvette. But didn't this, didn't it not perform as well as it with the LS, no? Well, it's a rotor, so it probably would have performed better like the first run. <laughs> but then the second time, the LS so would have kept that, running. You don't like rotors then? It was a joke. It was I a think joke. It's, I swear it's a tuner thing though. You just Because they're such an inefficient engine that tuners are like, I've no. Got, <laughs> I've got a lot of respect and a lot of time for the rotary engine. And I am glad I do because you need a lot of respect and a lot of time to have anything to do with a rotary engine. I think they're great. I do think they're reliable. I think that they're an incredible thing the way that they yeah. work. I definitely don't think they're for everybody. Done right. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of rotaries. Love the sound. Just awesome. Um, in a Corvette, though, weird. I mean, we don't really get Corvettes over here, so it's a, it's a, it's a weird one for it us. It might be the same thing where it's not that valuable of a car. Yeah. Which I'm not really sure. So that's, for me, that's, I would see a Corvette as being a special car. Like, sweet, awesome car. So then to do that, to put a rotary in it. It's a 20B, isn't it? Yeah, so no, yeah. I don't, yeah, not... Not my cup of tea, no, not really, no. Agreed, not really. If it's not improving it, I, I'm not sure that it's the right thing for it. And to be honest, if it was a factory fitted LS, well, LS7 or something it would have been, it would have been a very yeah. high end LS. It was probably pretty good in the first place. Mm. So putting a, a 20 year older engine that's renowned for unreliability and inefficiency is probably not the greatest way to improve mm -hmm. the car, but. He's FD in other hands though, I love yeah, it. That's it, awesome. that, that works for me yeah. because it's, I actually don't like the idea of putting anything else into an FD because you know what? Because it's such a beautiful car. Not a topic for today, but FD best looking car of all time. Oh, I believe so. I love them. Yeah, they they're very very nice looking car. If the three of us can have such varying opinions on engine types, can all this stuff, but all of us abs like FD best looking car ever made. They're a bunch of weird conversions. Some yeses, some noes, but further than that the hate part of this thing. What's with all the hate about this? Why do you think people are so passionate and are so keen to voice their opinion about why you did it so wrong and why you did it so right and why I shouldn't have done this to that? What, what do you reckon it is that fuels that? Why are people so passionate? We're no strangers to the comment section. I think maybe the overdone thing is, you know, there's a Barra in an R32, there's a Barra in a Commodore, there's a Barra in, in everything. So it's because it's been overdone, mm -hmm. but that just comes down to because it's such a practical engine to use it's, and, yeah. and it works. You've also got to remember that potentially half of these guys commenting can't afford that and they will, will, you know, they've never done it before. So in my opinion, those comments are invalid. Like until you have done it yourself, mm. then whatever, I, I, I'm not taking notice of that. The opinion that matters the most is obviously the person that owns the car and that's really what we look at when we're doing something for someone so we're not looking to do it for the, the comment section. We're looking to make a better car for the guy that owns the car and is investing the money in the car. And that's the, that's the, the main priority. It's the safety behind the keyboard too that you can just spit out whatever you want. And there's no, usually no repercussions for that. Um, but it also the other thing is seeing a car in person, you think about going to a car show and taking your classic restored 1968 Toyota Crown to a a guy who had one that had a 2M or something in it, you know, I had one, my dad had one of these, or I had one of these growing up. And then ours got this big block, supercharged big block Chevy in there. Crown was a comfort vehicle, so it was a cruiser, you know, family car. And then to see that in there, someone would, might be upset about it, but you know, we've made, that, we've made that car awesome. So that's, yeah, like, you really got to look at the big picture and go, look what we've done to this, and it's awesome. Excluding the fuel economy part of it, sorry, that one's down the drain, but 
When Is I'm, there a word for anti-fuel economy? We're not, we're not building cars. I think cars road trees are bad. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I can bring it down for a tune. It's like 50, 60 litres per 100 cruising. It's, it's bad. 50 or 60 litres. <laughs> it's bad. Well, this, I suppose this whole modifier thing, it is all about individuality, right? It's about yes, personal expression. It's yes. about your feelings from the car that your parents had back in the day. And my family uh, had dead standard Ford Falcons. Maybe I probably am a little bit jaded on that where if I see a 2J or a big block or something with shit hanging out the bonnet in an X whatever, I think it's cool, but then I always, or I might also think, oh, you know, I remember that car differently and that might make me think about it differently. So it really is that individuality and I think that's why there probably are so many opinions and that's all they are, opinions, and everyone's got one. Mm -hmm. And they don't really matter because your opinion is based on your history or your yep. past or what you know mm -hmm. and that's it is what it is so now onto a hypothetical question that's going to test all of the answers that you've already given us all right you've just bought a farm you open the garage it's got a 1966 pontiac gto in the shed all right it's 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 all original but it's not really in great condition it's got a bit of rust it's, the interior is not that great uh there's no engine what are you going to do with this thing i'm going to be very thankful that I bought the farm for a start. <laughs> um, yeah, I would definitely res obviously restore the body and car like that is probably going to be much easier for us to, to do anything with due to the, the aftermarket support for restoration wise. Um, yeah, so I'd restore it back so it just looks period, period correct and cool. And I'd probably do, I, I guess, what they'd call a resto mod where your uh, braking system, your, everything is improved. If it didn't have an engine in it, I would probably go for something like an L8T, like the new truck iron block. Um, it's kind of like an LS, but iron block 6.6 .6 litre, I think it is. Me personally, I love that kind of thing. I, lo I like restoring and working on, the, it's, it's weird, the little things like putting glass in the doors, but then making sure the bottom of the door is clean before we put the glass in. Like I love that stuff, so definitely restore it. Um, depending on what, what model trimmer was. It might already have good brakes on it, so you could probably fix them suspension-wise and everything. Engine-wise would come down to whatever I'm feeling that week because we, we're all car guys <laughs> and we all change our decisions. Yeah. And Al just said L8T, yeah, that's a sweet decision, but then you go, oh, hang on, let's go the opposite end. This, Godzilla, this 7.3 Godzilla just popped up and I can use that. If it had a factory 455 or something, you know, I'd probably, I would probably rebuild that and yeah. uh, put some you know, put a throttle body system on it and- Up high, like the- All the, you know, modernise the engine, run it on engine management. I, I actually really love getting old engines and putting engine management system on them to, to see how much better it's gonna be, to see wh whether that, whether it's the mechanical that's the problem or the, the way that they're run. Because we have done that before. Yeah. On, on a 351 Clevo, we've sort of um, injected it, a, a GT replica and completely different car. It's more, it's more like driving an LS powered. Yeah, nice, yeah. Be, Because of the way the engine runs now, it's not, it's running properly. <laughs> so you want the, yeah, you want the challenge of using the, like, yeah, resto, resto mod seems yeah, pretty yeah. logical for both of them. Yep. For me, I think the most logical thing would be to find somebody who would put the time and effort to resto mod it. And for me, that would probably be the nicest thing I could do, would be to pass that on to somebody who would actually give True. it the attention yep. it yeah. deserves. Yeah. Because, I would just look at the thing and it would just sit there because without the passion for it. I, Probably why it sat there for so long. Yeah. Right? Nothing would happen. I'll give you five grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's like, call me. So from this, we've kind of arrived at that resto mod at the end of all of this, of the opinions, of the decisions, of the crazy engine conversions. I like the resto mod setup and your recent, the, the Hakusuka with that, that's probably not really a restoration. It's a it's a resto mod. It's a resto mod on a Japanese car, which is not yeah. a yeah. common word to use there. I guess it's one of the closest things you'd get to a Japanese muscle car, I suppose, at the time. Yeah. Like a, you could put an LS in, it would have been a lot easier. Obviously, we, you wouldn't do that because the car, it just doesn't match the car well. Whereas keeping it in the Nissan breed seemed to make sense in this case. So that's what we've done. Although it's not a GTR, it still is a valuable car too. So um, I think Gav even still may have kept that engine put like in the sense of what if would happen, but that car for Gavin is a forever car. He's gonna hang on to that for the rest of his life. He wants to pass that down to his family, to his kids. 
And what we created was, I've done a fair bit of seat time in that car and it is awesome to drive. The power delivery, the sound, everything, the, the whole driving experience of that car is perfect for what it is. And that is like a Sunday driver for Gav. It wasn't valuable enough to restore back to dead standard and put in the corner. And otherwise, it probably just goes by the wayside and they just disappear. Yeah. So yeah. I'm into the, I think the resto mod thing makes complete sense to save these things for another 20 or 30 years as they age and become the yeah. next one of those cars yeah. that you start seeing on auction sites for the ridiculous numbers. Well guys, after all that, it doesn't look like we've actually come to a conclusion. You can put whatever your engine you want in whatever car you want. You can resto mod, you can restore, you can put it away for a rainy day, you can keep the conversion engine to the side in case you need to use it later on. You can put a Lambo engine into your VT Commodore you could put an LS into your Lambo and it's all a matter of personal opinion. It's, it's, it's all a matter of your situation. If you've got a Lambo that has no engine, well, yeah, put an LS in it. That makes complete sense. If you've got a running Lambo, not so sure, but it's all personal opinion. And I think that's why there is just so much controversy and why there's so many opinions, why so many people love it, why so many people hate it. Look, if you guys have seen a crazy conversion, write it in the comments. Leave a comment about any of the conversions that we've talked about, whether you love them or whether you hate them. Al, Woody, thanks so much for joining us today and no spending worries, the time man. to Thank talk you. to us a bit about these wild conversions. As always, my name's Scott. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content. If you've got a 1966 Pontiac GTO, give us a call. Do you want one or not? Five grand. Five grand. <laughs>